Hey, this is René. Welcome back to the second part of the programming tutorial where we have a closer look at the um, RSI Expert Advisor um, that we are going to build in this series. So in the last or the first part of the series, we had a look at um, yeah how we can create a new Expert Advisor and we talked about the three basic functions on init, on dinit and on tick. You can see it on the left here. And in this part, we will have a closer look at variables. So um, I will simply delete this print statements here because we don't really need it. And um, you don't have to understand everything about a print statement already because print is a function which we will learn in the next part. But for now, we will have a closer look at variables. Um, variables are um, pretty much, um, um, there are little like storages for data and whenever you are dealing or whenever you are programming anything, you want to store data and you want to process data. So for this course, you have to, um, you have to store data in the memory of the, uh, um, of the computer or laptop. And you do this by um, declaring and using variables. So, for example, let me let me show you uh, an example of an integer variable. Um, so, um, let us declare an integer variable. Its a name could be integer name, and its value could be two. So, this line of code is um, a, a pretty simple and pretty basic um, instruction which you, which we will see um, very often in, in any code. Um, so what we did here is um, we declared a variable, a new variable um, of type integer, which is, um, yeah, so you, you, you would say integer, but the short form for integer is int. And this data type is a data type, type that can um, or that identifies um, numbers like one, two, three, or one hundred thousand that do not have any digits. So it's like only um, yeah f full numbers um, that do not contain any digits. You can see it in the um, or you can see any data type in the MQL5 reference. Whenever you put uh, your cursor um, on a um, uh, on a um, yeah on an expression or word pretty much you can press F1 on your keyboard to open the MQL5 reference and it will automatically open the article that contains this specific word if it's um, inside the reference. So for this case uh, we will have the integer um, explanation and it says that it's a um, integer type. Um, and you can see the values that you can store into a variable of integer type. And the minimum value is minus um, blah, blah, blah. And the maximum value is um, the equivalent without and minus. And yeah, that's pretty much, um, yeah, and pretty much every um, uh, number between these two numbers can be stored into an integer variable. Whenever the numbers get bigger, um, you need another data type, um, it is called long, and in a long data type you can store even bigger numbers, and you can see the maximum and the minimum numbers here. So um, this is for um, numbers that do not have any digits. Um, you also have numbers with digits, of course, but you cannot store them in a, a integer data type. What you need for this is a double data type, or yeah, you can you can call them real types, I guess. And um, double um, variables can contain numbers with digits. You can see the minimum value and the maximum value here, and um, yeah, and you can see that you can store um, pretty large numbers inside a double data type. Um, what is also contained in this table is the size in bytes, which is not really important for most expert advisors because you do not really have to care about um, taking too much memory in your um, computer. 
But um, yeah, you can see the size um, of the, um, the variable here. And you can see that a double variable would um, take up to, um, or it would take eight bytes in the RAM of your um, computer and a integer would only take four bytes. So that's some background knowledge. Um, let me define a or declare a double variable here. You can do it like this, double name and its value could be 23.32. Uh, if I compile this, there is no error and um, everything is working fine. So let, let me explain what I did here. Um, we will have this example with the integer um, variable and um, there is a process of declaring a variable. Um, declaring a variable and whenever you declare a variable you will simply um, write the data type of the variable like integer. You write a name um, for this variable which can be anything so you can choose name you can choose integer name you can choose apple you can choose grandmother whatever makes sense to you and um, if you want to be able to read your own code after like one month or a year you should choose names that make sense so um, you should maybe call this variable counter or anything that makes sense in your exact um, in, your, in your code so if I do it like this, this is um, th there is no error. This is only a warning that this variable is never used, but it's no there's no error. So this is a, a valid declaration of a, a variable. And what what happens here is that um, whenever the uh, code is processed, so whenever the onTick function is called, this code here will be processed and the, um, the, the, the computer um, will get to this point um, and it will see that there is a declaration of a variable which is of type integer. So the computer can check um, the size of an integer variable and it is four bytes. So um, afterwards the, um, the, the, um, the, um, yeah, the computer will uh, go or talk pretty much to the um, random access memory or the RAM and it will say that it needs four bytes of, um, of memory for a variable called counter and it will uh, reserve the four bytes for any value that will be stored inside this variable at a later point in the, um, in the code or in the, um, in the program. So um, this is like only a reservation of um, of, um, of memory for any data that will be um, stored in the counter variable at a later um, point. So, um, yeah, this is pretty much. So um, we now have this um, have this memory and we can use it. So after declaring a variable, we can um, we can initialize it. So whenever you um, you you um, uh, you put a value inside a variable, you can, um, or this process is called initialization of a variable. So we could maybe put the value of um, 23 inside this counter named integer variable. So what happens when the, um, the program reaches this line is that this counter variable will now um, get a, or inside the memory, which is identified by the counter variable, there will be a, um, there will be a value stored inside, uh, which is uh, 23. So at this exact position in the memory, there will be um, yeah, the value of 23. So this counter name or variable is simply a pointer to this um, exact position in the memory of your computer. So um, yeah, you can um, you can put any value that is an integer value in the inside of this counter variable, and it will it will replace the um, the old value. So if I if I use um, 24 now, the 23 will be overwritten, and now there is um, 24 stored in this counter variable. 
Uh, I can show you that I am not, um, uh, that I'm talking the truth by simply adding uh, three print statements. So um, oh, if I compile this, uh, the on in it will be called whenever I attach the export advisor to a chart and it will uh, declare a counter variable without value. That's important. And it will print the counter variable, which should be zero right now because it's uh, zero is like the a basic value and it will be um, stored in a new integer variable that is not initialized. And, and then I will change the value to 23 and print it and to 24 and print it again. So let's see if this is working out and it is. I can show you again by changing the time frame. So first of all, um, there is zero printed, then, then 23 and then 24. So this is working and um, of course you can also, um, have a look at these um, double variables. If I print out a double name or the double name variable, you will see that there is the value of the double name uh, variable printed in the experts lock in the MetaTrader 4, uh, 5. Sorry. Um, so, that's it. Um, there's no, really, no real difference between a double variable and an integer variable. But um, what, I, what I mean is, of course, there is a difference because you store a different type of data inside this um, variables, but the process is exactly the same. So whenever you declare a uh, variable, the computer will uh, go to the, um, to the um, random access memory and it will store, in this case, eight bytes, uh, or it will reserve eight bytes of data or, or memory to, um, to store any double uh, value in, in inside. And um, in this case, we have the declaration and initialization of a variable in one line uh, instead of different lines. And this is also working great. Um, it just yeah saves or it makes the um, code one line shorter. And you can also change the value of the double name variable by just um, um, yeah, uh, putting a new value inside of it, like 2,323. And if I print it again, you will see that the value changed. So, yeah, this worked. Okay, so now you learned about integer and double data types. Uh, what I can show you now is some other data types. And let me just do it like this. So this, um, and when, whenever you declare a variable, you put the, um, the type of this variable in front of the name. And if you simply use the variable, you don't have to um, put the type before the name again, because the, um, the computer already knows that it's a double data type. So we have several other data types that are important, like a long type, um, variable, this could be a very huge number. If you print this variable, you will see it in the output and you can also use string data type variables, string type variables, which are um, um, variables you can store text in, like this is a text and you, also, uh, you always put text um, information inside of these um, quotation marks and um, it, uh, yeah, I can print this string type variable not variables and you have other data types like um, bool type um, yeah, like the bool data type which can be either true or false and it can, it can only be true or false. So this is only a one, one byte data type. You can see it, um, I don't know, it's not even, ah yeah, it is telling the size of this data type and it's only one byte because it's a really small piece of information. You don't need much memory to store this information. So this can only be true or false or yeah, one or zero pretty much. And if you print this, you will get the information will type variable and what else do we have left? Um, yeah, that's pretty much the important ones. So um, 
I think we, we won't use any data types other than these. And um, there are other data types that are similar to a long data type maybe. You, you will see a U long uh, sometimes, which is um, just an unsigned long data type. Um, that means that there are no negative values um, and the number can be even bigger. So U long type variable will be printed. And this can be a negative number, of course, but this cannot be a negative number. If I compile this and if I show you the output, you will see that there are several outputs here. Uh, first of all, the negative long data type variable that is printed to the log, then the u long, so the unsigned long variable that is printed to the log, then the text variable of type string and the boolean variable. And yeah, that's pretty much all I want to tell you in this programming tutorial. So the 10 minutes I, um, yeah, I planned for this are over by far. So we will see, um, I, I will see you in the next tutorial when we talk about functions and I also talk about variables a little bit more because I want to show you how you can work with variables and how you can add and subtract them and everything. So um, I will see you next time. Until then, have a great time. Bye-bye. Um,